This video will be concerned with Adair's action-centered leadership model. In the 1960s, John Adair made observations of leaders and their followers and out of this he developed his perspective of uh, leadership. Adair's model is beneficial for managers and leaders as it provides the foundations for the understanding of all teams and groups and organizations themselves. So we understand the basis for teams and groups out of the work of Adair. He made a major contribution in this area and this is one of the reasons why we're so keen to, to study his work. According to Adair, groups, teams, etc. are formed when there is a set uh, goal in mind. Uh, from these groups emerges the leaders. So when a group have a goal in mind, they want to achieve something. They have something they wish to achieve. They form themselves into a group to try and achieve that uh, target. And the group will then select a leader. So the leader emerges from the group and the group itself is formed because the group members wish to achieve some objective. Now the model is a tool for managers and lead leaders to apply or alter to different situations. So it's not an immutable tool, it's not a, a perspective that is fixed it can be modified in the light of the experiences from one group as a, compared to an alternative group. However, the model consists of just three elements. The task that is to be achieved, the team and the individual. So, it's a, it's a very straightforward perspective. It's the team, the task, and the individual. Now how do leaders achieve the task? What are the aims, visions, and purpose of the task? The most basic question that can be posed. What is it that the leaders are trying to achieve? There must be a clear understanding, a clear picture of what is required. Then. What are the resources that are needed to achieve the task? So a list of resources. This could be capital, workers, raw materials, the space in which to work, the environment. It can be all sorts of issues, but what types of resources are required? And then develop a plan for achieving the task. We say here it's a SMART uh, plan. SMART is an anagram and it's dealt with in several videos. I'm not going to go into it here but it is a very important uh, anagram. The objective should be specific and measurable and achievable and realistic and they should be time bound. And That's what it means. That's what the SMART anagram means. But I'm not, as I said I'm not going to go into to SMART here but the plan should achieve the task in an efficient manner. The leader should be capable of delegating responsibility to group members. So the leader should be in a position to have confidence in the group and in the tasks to be achieved and in the resources that are available and then delegate responsibility to the group members so that everyone feels a part of achieving the task, everyone's involved, there is loyalty to, within the group to the achievement of the task and the leader, him or herself, is showing confidence in themselves and in the group. The leader should be able to monitor the performance regularly to make sure that the performance is meeting the requirements 
there's always, always a tension between expectations and performance. It's what the group expects to be the outcome against what the actual performance was. And the leader should monitor this and take corrective action if required in the process whilst it's been done. Be able to restructure the group, reorganize it, uh, be able to modify the processes in a way that will achieve the target that, is, that has been set. So the leader should be able to assess the group progress. It should be able to assess the group progress and see if the performance is being met. And work through the progress, work through the experiences that the people have had, the group members have had in performing the various tasks and adjust the plans if necessary in the light of that experience go back to uh, the, the things that have gone wrong, the things that have gone right as well. Go back and make a note of them and uh, pick out good practice and pick out uh, issues that, that failed and perhaps adjust the plan or revise the schedule. And this means there is learning and should the ta same task be confronted in the future, the plan will be more suited to the achievement of the target. Now how leaders manage teams? Well, they should establish um, standards and performances. So the teams must know what is required of them, what sort of performance is required. And that should be articulated and clear. So everyone associated with the, the particular task knows his or her duties. They should be able to, the leaders should be able to monitor the activities and discipline, uh, integrity and focus on group goals. In other words, the leaders should be able to uh, support individual team members, but also uh, if they're not working according to the guidelines that has been agreed by the group, should be able to, to tell them, tell them openly that they are not conforming to what the group expects and do they want to be members of the group perhaps uh, their interests are elsewhere so the leader should be able to have some authority and the group the rest of the group should uh, recognize that uh, the leader should also be able to resolve any conflict particularly before it gets too big when a conflict is in the early stages it's, it's easier to deal with it's easier to uh, smooth out any issues and uh, to deal with minor conflict if it's left too long to fester it can become a big issue and a big problem the leader should be able to motivate the team and create a team spirit um, have good communications so that uh, the team works effectively together. They've got good morale and they cooperate with each other and support each other. And the leader should be able to uh, foster this, be able to promote it. The leader should also be able to look at roles within the groups and coordinate the various roles. And by looking at the group membership the leader should be able to, to select who within the group have certain skills and certain abilities and certain interests and allocate members of the group accordingly. The leader should also provide for resources. The leader should know what resources are available and make sure that the, the overall target is achievable given the, the set amount of resources. Um, if that's not the case then simply everyone is wasting their time because they don't have the resources necessary to do the job. So the leader must ensure that the resources are in place. The leader should also give regular feedback on performance. It's important to keep the group informed as to how they're doing, 
if they're behind on the schedule, if they're up to date with the schedule, what issues were confronted, what went wrong, how they were resolved. So it's important to keep the group um, aware of what's happening. And this will foster again um, good communications and a good spirit within the group. They, they see the team as working effectively together. So the leader should be able to communicate clearly to all members and have regular meetings. That's the internal communications, but the member may also have to have good external communications to be able to talk about the project to individuals outside the team, perhaps to the bankers who are financing it or shareholders or um, even to the press. So the leader should have good communication skills. Now the leaders have responsibilities for individuals. Uh, team members are different, they have different skills and different needs and the leaders should recognize this. They should um, not ask members of the team to perform functions that clearly they can't do. It's not just embarrassing but it's a waste of time and it causes aggression. So the team members should be selected according to their aptitudes and assigned to tasks that can be done. The leader should assist and support individuals. This is important. The individuals must feel that the, the leader is a supportive person, someone to whom they can speak and raise issues and discuss problems and get support. It's important also that the leader, as I said earlier, can delegate responsibilities to appropriate individuals. The leader must be aware of the, the talents within the group, who's good at what, and must therefore be able to um, select the right team composition, fitting the individual members of the team to their strengths, to what they can do best. Um, the leader should also be able to motivate and reward and praise individuals. That's important. So individual members of the team feel respected and recognized for their contribution. Should also be able to develop strengths and capabilities in individuals. Sometimes people have got capabilities that have not been recognized or haven't been developed properly. There's a, an opportunity for the team leader to, to bring out those talents perhaps if they're recognized. And the leader has perhaps an opportunity to provide training opportunities for the team. They can learn by doing, they can learn by performing the task but also there may be additional opportunities to meet as a group and discuss issues and share experiences. So that may be uh, a possibility. Now action-centered leadership. The model emphasizes leadership actions, the ability to effectively manage the three elements. That was the the individual, the task and so on. If one element is neglected the other elements will be unsuccessful. So it's important that everything fits together for it to work. For example, individuals develop groups. Groups are developed because there is a goal to be achieved. If there is no task there is no need for the team or individual. So it's pointless forming a team if there's no task to be achieved. It's very straightforward, it's very simple. Teams should only exist if they are going to achieve something, if they have a purpose. Adair states that if one element is weak, the other elements will suffer. 
Now in order to balance the three elements the following functions are vital for the leader. There's a planning, initiating, controlling, supporting, informing and evaluating functions. These functions are important. So the leader must adopt these functions. The leader must be a planner. The leader must initiate the whole process. The leader must control the situation, form the team and um, control what is happening so that there is organization. Support the members of the team, form them into uh, a unit that can work effectively together recognizing their individual talents and giving them support. They must inform the team when something goes wrong and must inform them of good practice and what's expected and deadlines and so on. And then it must the leader must be able to evaluate the overall outcome. What was right and what was wrong and what was achieved. Now the action-centered learning model is a common approach used by modern business. It's a very straightforward and logical approach to leadership, so it's, it's widely adopted. The model is easier to understand than many models and can be utilized in different situations. The functions of the leader are set out, they're very straightforward. We've just looked at the list of tasks the leader must uh, undertake. So it's easy to identify the tasks of the leader. It helps managers and leaders manage their tasks and their groups and their individuals. It's, um, once the functions or the duties of the leader are listed in the way we've just done it, um, it's easy for the, the leaders to see what is required of them and it's easy therefore to to get management into the whole system management which is supportive, constructive uh, recognizing individual talents and also motivates the the workers in a way to they will give their best because they are a part of a team and to see themselves as part of a team and it's supportive. So that's the Adair Action Centered Leadership Model. It's a very straightforward model. It simply itemizes what is required of a leader and talks about the advantages of the various elements and how it can come about. And that's all I'm going to do on this topic. It's an important topic. It's widely used in practice, so it's wise to know it. So let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.